You probably heard about this AI art right now, very popular that you can create your images. But do you know that Adobe actually have it? AI Sensei for a long time and we use it. We used it to this inside the Photoshop and something actually new. You maybe even don't know it's there, but it is very powerful AI neuro deep learning application. So let me show you this right here. We have an image and I will start by the way. I will start with the simple things you maybe know and we continue progressing to something new and more interesting stuff. So let's go right here. And of course, first it's a healing brush. It takes broad brush. And you remember what it does. It's actually when you go to erase something, it will replace. And it's a very easy, very simple way to do it. But we done this for so many times. We kind of become used to this, but that is actually analyzing elements inside and creating. You also have a different ones where healing brush, where you can actually kind of map it and paint with this way around. So it's not a, just a cloning tool because in some cases you think it is just cloning elements. No, it's actually analyzing underlying material, colors, um, luminosity, and based on this creating. But this is one of them. Next one, it is actually content aware elements. And this is if we're going to extend our scenery. And let's go right here. You see, it says not enable content aware. So usually when you extend, in you press enter, it just extend normally will fill up black or whatever your background it is. But what's happening if we enable content aware and we'll do exactly the same, just extend, press enter. You notice right now it's header process and look what it did. It's actually extend, extend, not just horizontal line. It's analyzed on the mountains, on the gradients and also on the cover and extend our scenery. In some cases it is. If you look, it kind of copying almost those elements, putting in like right here some. So it's not perfect. But again, this is, was here already for, I don't know how long, five years, more, six, seven years. It was for some time this option was inside the Photoshop. So it is not brand new technology, but it works very, very well. And it's very impressive. And it is improving every year. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll remove this one. Now we're going to something a little bit more interesting. Another one, it was example liquefy. So let me show you what the meaning. You'll see right here we have a two persons, kind of Halloween fun photo shoot. But you know you can actually change and alter appearance of the faces in Photoshop very easy to edge to do all these other manipulations. Like for example, when I create a doll head or for example, edging. So right here it's before and this is after filter applied. Actually, it's not that much composition was done here, except I had flames, some maybe smoke, but general it is just replacing the face. So let's see how we can do this. Let's copy this material. And again, I will layer, sorry, and I will show you how we can do so just kind of hopefully help you to find some interesting techniques. Okay, and we'll go to filters and next we go to liquify. And liquify tool is also using some AI option here. So it is analyzing, like for example, you can see it's detecting faces. Look, face, face one and face two. So we have it all of these two different ones, and we can modify. It's actually recognize the face, recognize eyes, eyes, mouth, everything. So right here, example, you can see we can make woo very you know bold eyes go this way change width, tilt, high distance, maybe like, you know, like make creepy, drop nose down, make nose a little bit more thinner, <laughs> creepy smile. You notice how it, it is recognized and it adjusting pixels according to this. So like, you know, we can adjust all that stuff. Forehead maybe smaller and you can play by yourself a little bit more like I don't know which one is creepier. Actually, both look could be a look creepy. Yeah, let's go this way. Okay. And so you can modify all these options, creating different fit on each face. This way you can go and manipulate with the face as you like it. Okay, you know what? Let's see what else we can do with a nose, nose high, nose width. I think we kind of good on this one. Just a little bit like this. And of course, when you create this, 
you can adjust face and you can go again over and over so those is kind of we already know we work with them they improve it every time but here's the new things coming up and that is called narrow filters neural filters i think and those ones is a little bit more Utilize engine what it calls Sansei image, Sansei um, elements, which is kind of uh, AI, and it's work with a cloud or on your machine, it depends on how heavy. And you can see right here, it's got all these options. We'll look on some of them in a second. Right now, I just want to go to Smart Portrait, and you see it is recognized all different faces. We'll just need to go select properly. Let's go with old man, and we can also this time modify edge maybe you know create quite a bit older okay create hair thickness maybe less actually i think it's a more thickness we're going one way and you can see it says process on the cloud let's go thickness less notice it does not produce everywhere it's just a small we need to come back after but it is already creating all of this Eyes direction, happiness, maybe not reduce happiness, but you can see we manipulating right now face very fast. In some cases, if you work with the uh, image based with AI or other things, it is will be very similar. It's actually very gentle, analyzed pixels, and in some cases, very specialized trained model to work with the uh, aging. So we can apply here. We also have it a little bit, uh, Kind of additional options we don't need a head direction we'll look at this in a second but you can see what we can ma manipulate here we can also just select another model and says a little bit this facial age let's go make younger leave it right there again notice right here it says processing on the cloud so actually these take information sent to the cloud with all this data set and everything located and based on this data set or a model is the AI, it's processing. It's the reason why it's setting, because it doesn't want to take all of these gigabytes, gigabytes of the model information and loading on your computer. Okay, so if you see right here, it's done. We'll come click OK. And this is one of the narrows. So we're going to look on a little bit more other filters, see what they can do. And this is, we have our old image. Of course, when you're going to manipulate, you can create, add a little bit more, you know, gray hair, other things. But general, it is what done with this. It says AI generated old face or other things. Okay, let's go right now and look on a little bit more of those narrow filters, how it actually works specifically for photographers. Right here we have a photo. It's a no makeup and you can see some elements on the skin. If we're going to filter, narrow filter, skin retouching. So if we open skin smoothing, notice how it's already disappeared. So again before and after notice on this we of course we have some filters that can do but i do like this because it's not necessarily remove all of them it's just moving remove attention from the detail from those because right here if we go on the original they may be a little bit overwhelmed on the faces take attention from eyes if we're done this way they still be there you can see some effect but they're much smoother softer and right here you have it options Increase your smoothness and blur if you need it, but it is much cleaner face already created this way. Well, already look on a smart portraits, but same, you can actually go ahead and play same things, except we did not look like ID reactions. Notice what they did is change ID reaction where you're putting, for example, I'm going to the left again, processing on a cloud, it's take a little bit more processing. Okay, and there you go, you can see it smoothly a little bit to the left. Actually, now let's go back to to the zero. We'll just reset to the zero. Everything. Okay. Next, let's go to expressions. Same. We have it. Surprise. Anger. Global. We have it. Head directions. This is interesting. Look. Let's go turn head to one place. You can see it's turned left. Um, of course, problem with the hair because I have it too dramatic done. But right here, it is fixed head alignment, so we can actually fix it a little bit on that and also the one is very cool it's called light direction not a shadow on the left or right so we'll try to bring more lights to the right side and we have it a little bit more even and if we go more to the left 
will have it a little bit more on the left. So this is actually very Im impressive how it can do. Makeup, it's when you convert from makeup one image to another. Example, we have right here, let's uh, let me turn on Smart Portrait, include makeup transfer, and we select image. Mm, let's go this one. And you can see right here we have it, and definitely we add eyelashes, lipstick, because it's what bright sort of we wanted. But that way you actually can convert from one to another. You don't necessarily need to be that heavy, you can modify it, but generally it is available options. If we go and look on a little bit more creative part, you can see right here we have it landscape, similar to maybe uh, Art Breather kind of mix landscapes. We'll look on this in a second, but generally, same, you select landscapes and you can mix them one on top of another ones. Um, and I think it's maybe right here we can do. So apply it. Let's see. And there you go. You can see it's apply even masking on the background. Without me selecting mask, it's took it and I put it on a background. Well, we don't need right now landscape to replace it. We have it also different style transferring. And this way you can select style you want it and it will apply to image itself. Let's take a little bit of time, which is kind of very nice because you can apply specific um, style as you need it with a string capacity and so on. Okay, harmonizations, it's needed. Um, filter mask and transparency, but the same can do. Color transfer, very interesting options because we can also just select specific, almost like LUTs. If you ever work with LUT or other colors, you can say, hey, I like colorization on this file. You can use it on a custom and upload it and use this. For example, if you see something like on Instagram, maybe you like colors done, you can take it and port it on yours. Again, this is analyzation. This is AI sensei that work, sensei that working on this. Also, we have a colorizer. So let me jump on this and showing right here. Where is right here? There you go. There is. We have it. Our black and white. And notice on our color one, it's a gray background. So this is important, kind of know because AI technically does not know what background it was. Does not know color, and it's actually going by luminosity values. So if we're going to colorization. You'll notice it is replacing gets nice in the face, but the background is now bluish because um, the luminosity of the blue very similar to luminosity of the gray in this case. And that's what try to do. Of course, we can go in adjust also some of the coloring to make more kind of nicer way adjust. And I wish this is options was inside the AI when it's creating as well. Just me joining other things when you add colorization or other things, but generally you don't need to pay this. You know, um, for me, it's interesting because we have here colorization, we have it size increment, we have it photo restorations. For those services online, it's charged like $20 per month or so on, many reviews, I did before reviews on this. And here you need to pay only $9 a month, getting Photoshop and all of this already built here. And this is a better quality, much better than those that online services. So just let you know, you already have these tools in your hand if you already use it and you don't need to go and buy and spend money on another one. So this colorization, super zoom has worked very nice because it is almost like um, allowed you to restore some details on small effect, which is kind of very nice how it's work with restorations or a JPEG image if you have it like small image you want to increase size. So this does work. You also have it blur. Blurs work very well for the portrait because if you notice eye right here and you can switch, you can adjust and go to focal distance, adjust the range and so on. So you can create very nice blur effect, a little bit more portrait kind of of depth of field is working on this. Okay, JPEG removal, we already kind of look and photo restoration. There's another thing. It's removing noises, removing all the small dirt and pixelization. Be careful with this because it's a powerful tool and you can see how it is smooth out, which is um, good and bad. The bad because we lost details and if you have it, something image details you want to store, you need to be a little bit careful. So most time you can actually just take down a notch and see as you're going. So that way you'll still preserve some stuff, but remove like aligns or other things. And again, all of this, it is processing with AI. Um, new stuff coming up. If you look on which 
uh, wait list. You can see right here, port generation, same like with art breather kind of. You have a water expression, uh, shadow generation, which is very cool because it seems like you can generate shadows on this. The reactions are very great for the compositing when you do this. And of course, the noise reduction. They already have noise reduction, but this is supposed to be better. It's supposed to be on level of tap as live or other things. Okay, so this is a narrow filters we look at. And another ones, they just recently updated. They already updated before, but now they update even better. It is object selection. So you can go select the tool. And if you're going in options, and you can see right here, you have it select subject. If you click on select subject as example, it is already selecting for you. But wait, there's a more. And more what I'm meaning, if you go inside and select the object selection tools, you actually can go over your images and it's will showing and highlight subject. So if you have more than one subject, that will work as well. Okay, let's go back to our sign with multiple people and we're going inside here. And if we're going over, you can see it is will perform and select for our subject, recognize one subject or okay let me uh, just select that one you can see how well it was selecting already one subject or if you click and select secondary subject so it will select secondary so it is recognizing multiple subjects and you can separate and select them as well and if you don't want to wait on the selection to come in when you wait you can just go ahead drag around and notice what's happening Ta -da! our subject is selected so it's a very nice tool and this is totally working with AI recognition and recognize not just by the edges, by contrast, everything. It is way to recognition. So it's a deep learning elements that is on your machine. The best part, it's a pack so tightly inside the Photoshop that you don't need to install another models or anything. It is there. And uh, probably a few more elements that we can use find AI inside that I did not point. But I think this is just already showing you how much AI inside uh, Adobe AI Sunset inside the Photoshop and it's already helping us. I hope you find this kind of fun. Please try go over see which one option is working. Post it if you find something new and I miss it here. I will greatly appreciate your feedback because you know I'm learning same like you going to other sites and find what people are showing and learn this way. So again thank you for watching.